We're going to put ourselves in your shoes for a day. That rock there. All right, crew, welcome back to another episode. This week, episode number 50. 50th episode. Half a century. So we <laughs> thought, leading into tourist season, so it's March today, something, 10th? Something ninth? like that. It's March, anyway, beginning of March. What we're gonna show you guys today is if you come to Exmouth, what can you achieve in a day? We're gonna put ourselves in your shoes for a day. So we're gonna be tourists at home. Tourists at home. So all we've got is a mass snorkel fins because we figure you can get that. If you come to Exe, you can hire it. And there's lots of places to hire mass snorkel fins. There are places you can buy mass snorkel fins. We've obviously got a car, which you could hire if you came up on a plane, or if you drove up, you'd obviously have your own. And ours is a four wheel drive, but we won't be using four wheel drive. So all you need is a car, Any mass car. snorkel fins. Yeah, and we're gonna take you to what we think you guys should be able to achieve in a day. And we're gonna try and tick off some creatures. So a lot of people come to Exmouth, they wanna see whale sharks, obviously. We're not gonna do that. If you wanna do whale sharks, that's a separate thing. You go and do a tour. We'll probably do a whale shark episode at another day. So we're gonna aim for a turtle, probably some form of shark, uh, a rock wallaby, a pelican, an osprey. That's our challenge. That's our challenge. As many creatures as we can find, basically. With a mass snorkel fins and a car. We're just stopping in town here to grab a bit of baked goodness and some lunch. So this is Ningaloo in a day. All right, go. arrived at a little spot just south of Tandy Biddy. I'll probably put a pin there, but it's a really cool spot because it's one of the few splots, splots, it's one of the few places you can see the blind gudgeon fish sometimes. So underground here in the range, there are lots of caves and there's fresh water underground. And this is one of the few places that fresh water comes to the surface. So you can't always see them, but this is one spot where you can see them. See if we can spot any blind gudgeon fish. All right, we are at the entrance to the National Park. There's the Cape Range National Park sign just there. Uh, this used to be attended by a ranger, but obviously not anymore. Everything's gone automatic. So over here, when you come into the National Park, you'll see there's this little pay station and I'll give you a tip. If you want to save yourself some money and you are traveling around through WA for the year, get yourself a season pass for the whole state. I forget the price. I think it's like 150 bucks. But if you come over here, you'll see your price for entry, for day entry is $17 per vehicle. $10 for concession, $10 for a bus. $8 for a commercial or private bus. So um, you can also get a locals pass. I don't know if that's just locals, but you can get individual national parks and I think they're like 20, 25 bucks. So you end up with a little card or a little sticker, I think that you put in your car. Caitlin's got one for this car, don't you Caitlin? Yes, I do. The season do. pass. No, mine's a locals one, but yeah, you can get just the Cape Range pass as well season pass yeah all right it looks like i'm driving no you're not i just was doing something <laughs> okay we've just entered the national park some beautiful currajongs there they're left over from when this was uh rainforest they tell me millions or thousands of years ago um but anyway we've just entered the national park and we're now driving south the initial plan is for us to go for a snorkel at turquoise bay and the reason we're doing it that way around is because the weather forecast which i'll chuck up now um in a little phone here uh or here it's forecast last night when i looked at the forecast there was a little blue slither uh on the west side here from about 10 o'clock it's now 9 15 or something um but that blue slither had disappeared so I'm pretty sure they were saying sort of onshore southwest or west southwest all day um, 
which is not the end of the world. We will still have a good time going for a snorkel. Um, and we're going to take you guys along. We should also say for people that don't know, if you're looking at the weather forecast here, then you want like easterly is the best. That's going to be coming off the land. So that's when you'll have like the best conditions, the most glassy, flat sort of water. Um, if it's southwest like it is today, it's coming off the ocean, so it tends to be a little bit more choppy. But generally, morning is best on the west side anyway. Um, Your typical weather pattern here is southeasterly in the morning, so west side is best, and then southwest in the afternoon. So then that's why you get those golf, golf glass offs. So when the wind's changing direction, and the range also helps to block that southwesterly a little bit and holds it out a little bit longer. So um, yeah, you get that beautiful. That's the best way to plan your day. You start off here early in the morning on the west side, and then work your way around. Um, so that's basically what we're going to do today. All right, we are going to show you a little treat on the way just before Millering. Uh, but apart from that, we'll see you back at Turkey Bay. You can just see Millering over there. Uh, we'll have a look from the top here. But as you're driving down, Ned and Ned's and Mesa Camp is just up that way, and we're going to walk up this little path. There's a little like um, bit you can pull off on the side of the road here. And then we're gonna walk up this little path. Woo! I'm like the Kung Fu Panda. Stairs are my nemesis. Woo! No, just joking. Uh, when you arrive up here, you're looking, this rock at the end here, looks like that. That rock there has a little rock on it. Can you see the little rock? Caitlin's gonna show you the little rock. This one? Yeah. And when you lift the little rock up, underneath there. So we've got a megalodon tooth. So this is from a prehistoric shark and the Cape range is full of these megalodon teeth. We've actually done another episode on these. If you look back, one of our earlier episodes was hunting for megalodon teeth in the range. Uh, but this is a really easy one that you can get to to have a look at. And it's a really well-known one. Everyone knows about it. Um, it's not signposted, but it's protected in its... You're not allowed to take any fossils or any rocks from the National Park. So this is completely protected. Um, where there was one back there. It was a huge deal. Someone came and cut it out of the rock and it was in the papers and everything. But everyone knows about this, it's very close to the road. So don't even attempt to try and take it. So obviously, yeah, treat everything with respect and then they will still be here for everybody to look at. Yeah, everyone can come and enjoy this. Um, but there, kids love it. My kids love this one. You can still see the serrations on the edge of the tooth there. Um, so really quick little stop, five minutes up from the car down there. Have a look at a meg tooth. You just pop the rock back how on many, when you're done. Pop the rock back on when you're done, yeah. And how many years old are they? Many. Many, I oh, watched the meg video. <laughs> That'll tell you. All right, back to the car. You can see the white roof over there somewhere. Of, a very dirty windshield. Of the Millering Visitor Center. So the Millering Visitor Center is run by the Department of Biodiversity, Conservation and Attractions and they're responsible for managing the park. I think you can actually hire mast fins and snorkel there. Um, and you can get yourself an ice cream there. There's lots of information in there that you can go and check out. And um, we're not gonna stop in there, obviously, because we have the information already. Um, but we're just gonna continue on to Turquoise Bay. But if you wanna stop in a Millering Visitor Center, that's definitely worth a look. Uh, they've got some cool stuff in there which we are not going to show you for the purposes of this video. We have arrived at Turquoise Bay. First real stop on the adventure. And not going to lie, this is not the first time that we have been here for this video. We have arrived at Turquoise Bay when we got here. I chucked the drone up to get some shots for you guys and guess what the spare drone the Mavic 2 that we just bought to replace the Mavic 3 that flew away has just flown away so it's turned into a recovery mission now anyway we're going to chuck our master snorkels on 
and see if we can go and buy this drone. Such a magic day. So, to get this drone, the problem I have is that I can't swim with my phone to show me where it is. So we're going to be full guesstimating. I just saw a bloke on a jet ski and there's someone out there on a kayak, it looks like to me. There's a little shark here. Tick, shark. Such a magic day. So, to get this drone, the problem I have is that I can't swim with my phone to show me where it is. So we're going to be full guesstimating. I just saw a bloke on a jet ski and there's someone out there on a kayak, it looks like to me. There's a little shark here. Tick, shark. Tick the shark, there's a shark right there. Anyway, I don't know if all that's sort of gone out the window. It depends how long it takes us to find this drone. Let's go and have a look. Look-see. See what we can find. I'm going to talk to this bloke on the jet ski. That's what I'm going to do. That is exactly what I'm going to do. Alright, just give me five minutes I'm going to talk to this fella. We're right on the point now, this is not where we would normally start snorkelling. It's all gone a bit pear shaped. Alright, so we've found a saviour. Hey Foxy. Thank God. All right, Luke's here. Hello. Luke happens to be here on a jet ski. Where'd you launch that, mate? Ah, uh, damn city. True. Yeah. The quick black down. Yeah. All right, so he's going to help us find the drone because I can't swim around with the phone, obviously. Uh, we will have a solution for that in the future, but at the moment I can't. So we're just going to waddle out to the jet ski here. And over there somewhere, probably where those people are kayaking, there's a drone. So we're going to go and try and find it. All right, we'll keep you posted. Okay, drone. drone. three, Ningaloo crew zero. That literally is the third drone. Fourth, fifth drone. Anyway, I've lost count. Uh, drone's gone. We just went out and had an exhaustive look. That absolute legend, Luke. Luke on the what jet ski back there. He helped us out, but there were some people on a kayak out there just before we got there. And I wonder whether they picked it up. They may have seen the splash down. Look at that, there's a hat there. Someone just lost a hat. Anyway, beautiful day. So we're gonna jump in for a swim here. Um, it is a very beautiful beach. It has been voted one of the top, is it top 10 or top five? Top 10 in Australia. One of the top 10 beaches, I think in the world. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's all subjective, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a really nice beach. Yeah, beautiful beach. So we are gonna jump in here and go for a swim. Yeah, we are. We're gonna teach you guys a little bit about what to look out for here and... Um... Get nice and sun safe. <laughs> uh, teach you guys a little bit about what to look out for here and maybe find a drone. <laughs> and um, if we got the drone, we can show you some aerial footage uh, of the place, but that'll make it really easy because there's some currents here that you want to watch out for. So 
So there's two car parks here. Um, this one that we're at now is called the Drift Loop. And then the other one that's just over there is called the Bay Loop. Uh, the bay loop doesn't have any current. It's just a nice little bay and you can sit and chill. Uh, there is a bit of snorkeling there. You want to look for the darker water. This one here has the best coral. There's a bit of a technique to it because there is a current that flows here. So we're going to show you that when we get down the beach. Well, Caitlin's going to educate you guys. There is signs as well that you can look at. So it's pretty obvious. It's very easy. It's actually the most relaxing snorkel. Snorkel on a walk, I call it. Am I rubbed in? My rubbed in crew. <laughs> Arriving at Turkey Bay, we're going to walk up there. There are toilets here. And there's a little fish ID information panel you can come and look at. It's not fish ID. It's just about all the different creatures that you might see and about anchoring and take care beware. So yeah. We have arrived. <laughs> so straight away you can see um, it's higher tide at the moment because the water's right up to the fence up there. But that doesn't matter. It's good for getting over the coral. A little bit of wind coming in. Now the current, Caitlin's going to talk about the current. So you guys can see out here there's some waves breaking out there. So where those waves are breaking is the outer reef. So that's sort of that wall of coral that separates us from the ocean ocean. But all of this water in here is going to be flowing out somewhere out to the back of those waves. And so here, there's a channel to the north of us right now. And that's where the water will be flowing out. So that's what makes this a drift snorkel here. So the current is running from south to north. And so for us, that means that we are going to be walking as far south as we want to drift and then we're going to hop in the water there we're going to let the current bring us down here until we get to this little point over here and that's where we're going to swim in and hop out of the water so yeah that's a pretty standard current here at ningaloo south to north uh, most places are so the spot we're going to walk to we can actually leave some stuff here that we don't need um, at the at the entrance uh, we're probably going to leave this camera here too because we don't need this one in the water. Uh, I'm going to throw my towel over the fence. All I need is my mask, snorkel and GoPro. And we're going to head up. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a dark patch just up there. That dark patch is actually a bommy. So that's where we're going to start. We're going to walk just to the south of that. I'll show you with this GoPro, but the sound isn't as good. We're going to walk just to the south of that. And then we're going to hop in, swim out to that bommy and then drift all the way down and see if we can find you guys a turtle and a shark maybe. Let's go! It's always a good idea when you are out snorkeling just to pop your head up, make sure you know where you are in relationship to land and any landmarks that you know of. Also, good idea to look out for any boats around. Always take responsibility for yourself in the water. Okay, so we can see just over there, that's where we got in, or that's where we entered the beach. Uh, that's the end of the beach, so we're drifting along nicely. Here's some more underwater at Turkey Bay.
said before, keep popping your head up. And when you get to about here, you can see where the signs are on the beach and the end of the vegetation. From here, you want to start swimming towards the beach, just across the current. All right, so Caitlin and I are going to head in now towards the beach and then, yeah, see if we see anything on the way in. We're back. We found a turtle, found an oki. Some tourists. An anemone with some anemone fish in it. <laughs> it was beautiful. Beautiful. All right, that's us. We're leaving Turkey Bay. Hope you enjoyed the footage there. You can see at this time the beach is pretty much empty. Beautiful beach. Uh, if you want to just chill on the beach though and go for a splash in the water, the best one is the Bay Loop over there. All right, crew, we are back in the car and now we're going to take you to our next destination Operation Rock Wallaby. Rock Wallaby. Go. All right, crew, this is a Parenti. This is a Varanus Gigantica, and it's a pretty big one. And this is the largest monitor that we get in Australia. So they get up to about two meters long. And this one here is probably, I don't know, 1.5 meters. So pretty big one, but not fully grown yet. I'll put some shots in for you. It's under here. See if you can spot it there. The camouflage is amazing. So, so on to Yardy cool. Creek. Let's go. On it. Get the smudge off. Balls <laughs> for cleaning. Okay. Bye. Wait. What are you doing? Wait, just wait. 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 You happy oh, there? Oh yeah. Good? And go. For cheap or for expensive, and you can buy Instagram worthy mass snorkel fins. <laughs> There's lots of different fat mass snorkel fins you can get. Um, but we're gonna take our mass snorkel fins. So all we're taking with us is a coffee you can pick up on the way out. Uh, the Millering Visitor Centre does have some stuff in town, in, in the park, uh, but really only the basics, like you could pick up an ice cream, maybe a packet of chips. So you really want to take everything you want with you for the day. So we've got a, I've got a nice coffee, because that's my thing. In our reusable cups. In our reusable cups. We've got a <clears throat> bottle full of water. Bottle full of water. That's it. I've got thongs on, and that's <laughs> for those of you in America, that's flip-flops. For those of you in New Zealand, that's jandals. <laughs> and I've got some boardies, and I've got a sh my adventure shirt and my hat. And some sunscreen. Maybe we'll do an outfit of the day. Anyway, yeah. let's go. Let's get go. Get some snacks. <laughs> You're so wobbly. That's all right. No, and bad angle too. Yeah, like that. Well, okay, and um, yeah, so. Oh, bye. Just picking up people.